Hello and welcome to this video. Today we're exploring the cause and effect matrix, the document that defines exactly how every fire alarm input triggers the right outputs, ensuring the system responds exactly as designed. Chapter 7 of NFPA 72 applies to the documentation required for the design, acceptance, and completion of fire alarm systems. When documentation is required by the authority having jurisdiction, one of the mandatory documents is the system sequence of operation. Inputs are the signals that initiate system events. These can include smoke detectors, heat detectors, manual pull stations, water flow switches, supervisory devices, and interfaces from other building systems. Actions that occur in response to an input can include audible and visual notification appliances, HVAC shutdown, door releases, elevator recall, smoke control system operation, unlock exits, and suppression system activation. Why the matrix is needed. It clearly documents the system logic, guides the programmer, and is essential during commissioning. The matrix is also a required part of the acceptance and integrated testing process and helps prevent miscommunication between the designer, contractor, and the AHJ. The egress strategy is the foundation of building life safety because it defines how occupants are protected during a fire. The fire alarm, egress, sprinkler, and smoke control systems are all designed to support that strategy. It dictates how the fire alarm activates, who is notified, which systems are controlled, and how all life safety components work together. This is why the cause and effect matrix must always align with the building's evacuation plan. A typical example of system integration is when a smoke detector activates and triggers multiple coordinated actions. The evacuation signal sounds throughout the building, exit doors unlock, stairwells become pressurized, the HVAC system shuts down, elevators are recalled to the exit level, and the alarm signal is automatically transmitted off-site. There are three interface methods. First method is dry contact relays. This is the most traditional and common method. The fire alarm control panel uses a simple electrical connection to open or close a circuit in the connected system. This provides a basic on-off or open-close signal. Second method is addressable modules. In modern addressable fire alarm systems, specific input-output modules are used. Each module has a unique address allowing for more granular control and monitoring of specific functions or devices from the FACP. The third method is communication protocols. More sophisticated integration uses network protocols like BACnet or Modbus, which allow for a more intelligent two-way exchange of data and commands between the FACP and building automation systems over a common network infrastructure. Next, let's explore a specialized tool designed for accurate and faster input-output matrix design. To begin, locate the fire alarm toolbar, then click on the input-output matrix command. Inputs are displayed on the left and outputs on the right. Here you can see the already defined inputs and outputs. You can choose to sort the list either alphabetically or by most frequently used. You can type in the search box to quickly find any specific input. You also have the option to add any project-specific items to your list. The same options are available in the Output section of the form. Options such as adding, removing, and renaming items are available within the form for both inputs and outputs. For the output section, you can add or remove categories as needed. 
Each category represents a functional group of outputs, such as enunciation, notification, emergency control functions, or any project-specific group. In this form, you can select inputs and outputs based on your project's documents, which are derived from egress strategy and life safety objectives. In the settings section, you have several customization options. You can change the color of columns, rows, table, and circles. This flexibility allows you to create a clear and visually organized matrix that matches your project style and makes the information easier to interpret. The settings allow you to define text styles, adjust column and row text alignment, and even export the matrix into an Excel file. As you move your mouse over the table, the corresponding column are highlighted to help avoid mistakes. Hovering over a cell shows its related row and column as a tooltip. Click any cell to assign action. At this stage, you need to define the relationships between all selected inputs and outputs guided by the documentation and fire protection goals and objectives. If you need to modify any part of the matrix, simply type NSV edit and select the table. This action will bring up the main panel again, allowing you to review and adjust any items as needed. With this feature, you can easily make corrections or updates without having to recreate the matrix from the beginning. If you want to generate an Excel file, simply click on Save as Excel. Then choose the location where you would like the file to be saved and assign it a name. This makes it easy to store, organize, and share your matrix in a familiar format for further use or reporting. Excel generation has started in the background. Once complete, your file will be available in the location you selected. With NSVCAD, creating and managing your input-output matrix becomes faster, clearer, and more efficient. NSV apps are a smarter way to design, edit, and estimate fire alarm projects. For more information, educational content, and detailed product information, please visit nsvsoft.net. Thank you for watching.